keep learning your craft. Keep learning whatever that thing is, that you're passionate. It never stops because the world never stops. And every person is contributing their own stuff. And then every generation is coming in and shifting. I don't want to say what's wrong with it, but infusing it with new energy as we continue to grow and evolve. I love studying style because it is a form of self-expression. And the reason I love to study it so much is because we as people are creating it. Trends are based on what we're going through as a society. Hello, lady. Welcome back to the Style for Life podcast. It's your girl, Katie. I am super pumped to be back with another episode this week. It's hands down. One of my favorite episodes is always this one, the monthly roundup, especially this month because we're heading into September, that big September energy. So fucking here for it. I cannot even tell you. So you may or may not be like me and are just like love routines and hate routines. So what I've realized about myself is like there's a lot of and. I'm constantly experiencing and. Summer is my favorite season and I'm just ready for my kids to go back to school. I had an amazing summer with my kids and I'm ready for those little dudes to go back to school because I need some structure in my life. As much as I crave freedom, I also crave routine. So I'm super excited about this month's roundup. It's going to be a juicy one. So as always, you guys know, like my goal with this podcast intention is to share things that have been working for me as I navigate this journey called life and just share and be inspirational and be real and be vulnerable and create community as we, again, navigate this thing that we call life. So my monthly roundup is and always has been one of my favorite episodes because I am dedicate this time to really get intentional and focus on the my favorite things, like favorite things that have inspired me, quotes, mantras, whatever, um, things that are just making me feel good in general and, you know, style solutions that are helping me feel amazing in my body. So what I've really learned through podcasting and running my business over these last couple of years is this whole lifestyle game that we're playing, <laughs> not game, but this whole business of creating the lifestyle that we really, really want for me falls into like three big buckets. So there's this body confidence bucket that at the end of the day is where I spend a lot of my time. I can call myself a stylist, but I spend a lot of my time working through body confidence on myself and with my clients. The spe- second space that I love that this podcast was initially born out of was really the mental wellness, right? So the end of the day to me, this podcast was really sharing things that are helping me on my mental wellness journey. And then, of course, last but not least, style solutions to help us feel good in our body now. My goal today and every day is not only to inspire, but to raise confidence and energy to feel good today in this moment so we can continue to be present. So let's get this party started. If um, you're interested, you can hop on to the Style for Life newsletter so I can send you a fancy email so you never miss an episode and you can keep up with all the things that are going on in the Style for Life Katie Just Styled universe. Um katiejuststyled.com backslash newsletter. You can just hop on, stay up to date. It's a space that I really love showing up. I've always been obsessed with people who write. I think writers are highly creative people and I've always doubted my skills. And I ain't saying that my skills are good, but I'm showing up (laughs) in those emails all the time and I can see how my writing is getting better and better and better and I'm getting more and more comfortable. So katiejuststyled.com backslash newsletter. And you can get the juice first. So that being said, this is why you need to be on that newsletter list. September is the new January, right? 
Love it, love it, love it. I think it's always been. I just don't think I was aware of that. And now I totally am. I know I've told this story before and I love to tell it every year. I realize I'm recording this and this drops. It's technically August. But at this point, anytime after the 15th of one month, we're basically to the next, right? (laughs) Just joking. It's funny to me. Around Labor Day every year, I always get the most motivation. I'm like the most motivated to lose weight. I'm the most motivated to start a new project. Every time my husband and I have tried to get pregnant, because of course, you know, I'm a planner. It's always in September. Both our kids know both of them didn't work that way. But the point is, those were the moments when I was ready, especially my first, right? I will never forget it was Labor Day weekend. We were coming home from a trip and I was like, huh. What if there was a couple kids in the back seat? I think I'd be okay with that. And that memory, well, obviously that's a big one because I was very no kid for a long time, very pro no kid for a long time. That's such a big memory for me. And I always think about the season and how I just really had that shifting energy and it was wild. So September is a new January and I have some exciting new shit up my sleeve. I cannot wait. So fun things to be on the lookout for this fall from me and Katie just styled is a new fall lookbook with easy outfit formulas. So I've really been brainstorming on this baby for a while and I'm really passionate around putting out a fall lookbook to break down the trends, why the trends exist and how you can shop them and update your closet, not to be on trend, but maybe you are in a season where you need some jeans. So when you go jean shopping this season, I'm just setting you up to know what to expect. So when you go shopping, you will know how to shop for your body, how to incorporate those new jeans that are going to be so relevant in the stores into your current wardrobe and give you super easy outfit formulas. Because if I don't get one thing more than I get anything else, it's how do I create super easy outfits and feel confident? You guys know that's my absolute jam is to be really comfortable in my jeans, my jean shorts, whatever it is. So be on the lookout for that special little gem that's going to be coming out this fall. Also in September, we're going to do another dump the frump workshop. So this time it will be focused on the fall. I have some brand new, really fun tips that again, super easy things you can do to feel amazing in your body now where you are exactly at. And the most exciting, most scary thing I have mentioned on a couple of lives, because I'm just putting it out into the universe and going to let it create itself and come to fruition is I am going to do a group program and I'm super, super excited. So if you've been thinking like, yeah, I'm kind of digging the styling thing, but it's just, I don't just want to be styled. I'm craving community. I want to feel good in my body. I need the mindset work that comes around the body. That's what I really envision for this group program is a space where we get to focus on those three pillars I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, body confidence, mental wellness, and style solutions. Really, the focus and key on this is reawakening to our lives and our style, getting styled for life. Anyways, those are my big goals for January. I mean... (laughs) September being the new January. And I wanted to share them here with you guys and plant some seeds to know what are you planning for this September, this fall. All of that being said, that all sounds great. And it's all like, yeah, it sounds like I'm over here just like kicking ass and taking names, which I like to think that I am. But like I said, all of that comes with a lot of back work, just like the styling does. All of that comes with a lot of the mental hygiene, the wellness, the practicing, the habits, the building of the confidence muscle, the self-worth exploration that I'm constantly on, and I'm sure you are too, of really rewiring my brain to stop seeking outside validation and create my own validation. So that being said, I wanted to focus on that as we step into this September new energy. There's so many things to celebrate. So this is partly like me celebrating that I've run across these things because I love to call out celebrations, but I don't have any very specific ones that I want to call out in this monthly roundup. But 
my celebration, I guess, is coming on the podcast and then sharing them with you. So a couple of things that I've noticed over the last month, since the beginning of August, and this energy has been rising and rising, and then like, you know, every week and all the back to school messaging and all the getting into routine messaging, fight it as we might, like there's just normal cadences and ebbs and flows in nature and society that we all just, I don't want to say fall prey to, because that's actually part of what I, um, I want to talk about. But that we all just flow into, because I honestly think it's a flow. And I would think that most of us would agree that, yes, there is a lot of grief around the summer ending, but there's also a lot of excitement about what's new. And what I've noticed is that every time there's a change, it comes with both. Anytime there's a shift or change in your life, it's not one or the other, even if it's a good thing. There's still grief and loss for whatever the version of that it was before. And I'm going to give you a real stupid ass example. I say it's stupid, but I bet a lot of you will understand where I'm coming from. So let's talk about like our personal electronics. So I posted a picture on Instagram this week where I have to upgrade my podcast. I mean, excuse me, I have to upgrade my laptop because... Oh, here's something else new. I'm going to start doing video podcasts because if you could see how much I'm shaking my hands right now and how animated I am, it's going to be so amazing. And then when I do focus on style in an episode or give a trend report, you can pop on YouTube and watch. So I'm really excited about that. So my husband and I have been working on upgrading cameras and things like that. And my current laptop cannot function and support the video without like losing its mind and sounding like it's about to take off out of the house because the fan is so loud. That being said, for a moment, I was like, but I love my laptop. Like this laptop's gone with me on trips, on business retreats, done so many things with me. It's rose gold. I have my Salt Bay sticker on it. I have all of my stickers on it. My feminist as fuck, my cauldron stickers, my cup stickers, just like my David Bowie sticker, just like so much of my personal energy, my big bitch energy has been infused to this laptop. And it's sad. And I know this is like a total fucking first world problem. I'm very aware of that. But it's like, oh, I'm very excited to do videos on my podcast. I'm very excited to serve my clients with a better camera that we can see and connect better and be able to show up and show things just more clearly and to do this on podcasting and connect more, not just in voice. But at the same time, there's the end right now. I have to get this new electronic and I have to infuse it with my energy. I have to create new memories for it. That's an easy example because it's simple. And it seems like, oh, great. I just bought a new MacBook. What a fun, exciting thing that I get to do. And blah, 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 right? And like, well, A, I have to pay for it. <laughs> so that there's that. And I have to infuse my personal energy into it. It's kind of just like every time you get a new phone, every time you get something new. And I truly believe electronics, there is an infusion of a personal energy into it. So that little example has opened me up to realizing how that comes up in so many other areas of our lives. So as you're creating these goals for January, one of the things and one of the reasons I know that we don't create goals and we let ourselves stay in mediocrity is because of that grief. Because no matter what, we might not be aware of it, but every time we change, there's always a little bit of grief that comes along with good things. There's always a little bit of grief that comes with up-leveling in your life, up-leveling in your career, up-leveling in your money. You know, that, oh, they got money, they're new, and they've changed. Well, I don't know how you go from living one lifestyle to another lifestyle without changing on some level. And I don't mean negative. I mean changing on some level. So that was just something I wanted to point out is that anytime we're experiencing really good change, there still can be a bit of grief in it. And as you up level, or if you're wondering what might be stopping you, that could subconsciously be going on in the background. So a couple things to think about as you're constantly working on your self-confidence issue. But I wanted to also share a couple of things that I've really learned. One, I am a fucking perfectionist on my own level. I always said I didn't really identify with being a perfectionist because I so much more identify with a get shit done person. But what I had noticed is launching this group program, doing these lookbooks, 
um, doing these workshops. I hold myself back from doing them because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I've never launched a group program. Well, I did try to launch one last fall and it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. And then I just stopped trying to do it in the middle of it because I was completely overwhelmed and there was other personal stuff going on. And I was like, ah, oh, I can't ever do that again. And people have been asking about it and talking about it. And I was like, I can't do it. And I was like, why can't I do it? Oh, because I want it to be fucking perfect. I don't want to suck. I don't want to be new. I don't want to be green. I just want to come out here and be fucking awesome. So I've been talking and having these self-confidence conversations because I guess that's a little bit of perfectionism, but it's also self-confidence to me. Everything in the world comes back to self-confidence to me. Like, I've been saying that way before I started the podcast. I should have known that the next step for me was always going to be something involving self-confidence. The So I've been, I don't want to say struggling with debilitating self-confidence, but I've really been buried under this sense of not being good enough, being scared to suck, not wanting to suck, so not fucking taking action. So a couple of things that came up for me with that is one, I play the game of like, I don't know how, I don't know what I'm doing. But while that's not true, I also know how to fucking get on Google and do a Google search. I also know how to access my community and ask the real questions. And then my husband called me out on it. And he was like, when you don't feel confident about something, like you will avoid it. He was like, what you really need to do is learn it on the most basic level that you are confident enough that you understand it and you know what it is, even if someone else is helping you do it. Even if a friend or someone you're hiring is teaching you what to do, you still need to pay attention to it enough until you are confident that should that support go away or something happen that you know what you're doing. And I was like, son of a bitch. And the reality of it is, most things are just a Google search away. And I'm not saying DIY your life with Google searches, but what I'm saying is I'm super passionate about fashion. I love style because it's the highest form of self-expression. And one of the ways that we can continue to root in and really just build on our self-worth and harness it and just feel it and really infuse ourselves with deep, deep self-worth is through our self-expression, feeling safe enough to self-express. So that means safe enough to wear the clothes I really want to wear, right? I still don't think I'm wearing the clothes I actually really want to wear because I don't think I'm actually doing the things that maybe I really crave doing that require those outfits, right? But I love it so much. I love studying style because it is a form of self-expression. And the reason I love to study it so much is because we as people are creating it. Trends are based on what we're going through as a society. Love it, love it, love it. And every time I spend an hour, 30 minutes, 10 minutes just researching and reading articles from the fashion forecasters that I like and the house designers and things like that that I like, the fashion houses, I come out of that feeling so much more confident in myself and my craft. And then I can start to connect the dots. I can start to say, hey, I'm hearing these conversations with my clients. I'm seeing these things on Instagram. Now all of this is starting to make sense. At the end of this, I have a couple more points and I want to share some, I want to do a little fall mini fashion report as part of this fall roundup. And you're going to be like, oh, shit, (laughs) like now I see how all of this stuff is coming together, right? So keep learning your craft. Keep learning whatever that thing is, your passion. It never stops because the world never stops. And every person is contributing their own stuff. And then every generation is coming in and shifting I don't want to say what's wrong with it, but infusing it with new energy as we continue to grow and evolve. And that's beautiful and that's amazing. But really, you can never stop learning. And the funny truth behind that is when I was graduating from college with my fashion degree, I can't remember who the guest speaker was because let's face it, I was 22 and I did not give a fuck. I was like, whoo, I'm graduating. (laughs) And I remember them speaking and I just remember them saying, never stop learning. Like your learning doesn't stop here. And I thought, dude, I have been in school for so long. Like I am just, this does stop here for me. And I always think of that because it triggered me so much that here I am 20 years later 
So I was trying to do the math really quick. Roughly 20 years later, and I can still remember that, him saying that at our commencement speech. Another thing that I would really like to touch on as we step into this new September energy and you have all these big goals, I just listed like fucking five really, really big things that I'm excited to do in my business. I know you have really big things too. These are literally the mindsets that I'm working on, right? So realizing that I am allowed to be new, I'm allowed to be green, I don't have to be perfect. The people in my life want my magic, not my perfection. So whether that's my family My clients, my friends, they don't want me to be perfect. They just want my fucking magic. They want me to feel good. They want me to do the research so I feel confident and I can make the connections because at the end of the day, that's my fucking jam and that's what I love and that's how I show up. That's that Aquarian energy, right? That collective, like what's going on in the collective? How can I tie this back in? That's that energy. I'm just (laughs) laughing because I have on my Aquarius shirt as I record this. So I'm going to keep doing that. I am going to make sure I'm constantly learning, always learning. I've got it scheduled into my week over the next couple months. I always like do research, but I have it on my schedule now because I am, I live and die by my schedule. Er. The other thing that I would like to plant a seed that has come up for me a lot, a little theme that's come up for me a lot this summer, I mean, a lot my life, let's be honest, but in other conversations this summer was victim mentality. So on one angle, all of the things I'm mentioning around the resistance, the, you know, I can't be scared I can't be new. I'm not allowed to do that. I don't want to learn new things. That's all a byproduct of victim mentality as well. And that was something that I noticed I was leaning into to block myself from taking action on some of these things. So a lot of these big ideas I have for January are all fucking big ideas I had last year. They're all big ideas I had in the spring. They're all big ideas I've had since I started this business. But I let myself fall into this little victim mode sometimes. And it's not true, right? I'm not a victim of Instagram and its algorithm. I'm not a victim of my kids being home from the summer. I'm not a victim of anyone else's shit. No, the only person I'm in competition with is me. That is it. Like I have not experienced that so much as I've had as I have experienced it this summer. Is holding on to stories that just don't serve me anymore. So I can give you one really good example on this. So, and in my mind, this is playing victim because I was constantly just running fucking stories in my head of other shit that other people have told me. And I applied it to my life without ever really questioning it or myself around it, right? So you guys know I love cycle syncing. It really saved me at one point in 2020, right when I had lost my job, It gave me something to like grasp onto. Through cycle syncing, I've learned that my cycle doesn't, my energy doesn't always match up to the traditional quote unquote, you should be feeling this in week one and you should be feeling this on your period. Energy, the more I've gotten to know myself, the more I build on my confidence. I don't know, just different times. Some of this shit is fucking textbook, right? Some of it is like day 25. I'm not loving humans. And then some of it's not. Sometimes I have a lot of different energy. I had this story in my mind that I could not run a couple of days before my period because I'm in luteal phase and I should be slowing down and my estrogen's almost at its lowest and you shouldn't be doing heavy cardiovascular activity, blah, 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 blah. And I was out on a run with my husband and we're walking and he's like, and I might've still told this story in a podcast before. And he's like, you know, we should just run. And I was like, no, you don't know what it's like. You're not a woman, blah, blah, blah. And then I just, like, I don't know who the fuck it was because it definitely wasn't me. It definitely was my highest self. I was like, hmm, is that true? And I hate when people say that shit to me. I love self-help and can get really irritated by it. And I was like, is that true? And I was like, what if I just run and see what the fuck happens? And it was amazing. And that's when I really heard what a coach had said to me before over and over and over is we get to keep what we hold on to. So every time we hold on to the victim mentality, every time we say, oh, my business is going to fail. I can't run my business because my kids are home this summer and it's just too much. 
Now, that's your choice. This summer, I chose to pull back on... You can ask anyone who's scheduled to come on the podcast. I rescheduled all my podcast interviews. I really scaled back on marketing myself this summer because I did want to create that time and space with my kids. Now I'm ready to just get back and like do some cool ass shit. So in the past, I've played that game though. In the past, last summer, 2021, I was like, oh, I can't do anything because my kids are home. I can't do this because so-and-so, oh, my husband doesn't understand what it's like to be a woman, blah, 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 blah. While all of that, quote unquote, may be true. Is it true for me? Am I playing a victim in this moment? What part of this is my radical fucking responsibility? Like, what part of this do I get to control? People have told me this. Okay, well, is that true? Yeah, but is it really true for me? I have a different energy than every other person on this planet. So these are just frameworks that can be passed on to make things easier when you don't know where to start. But once you've built up that confidence and you have keep on learning something, you really, really, really get to make it your own. And you can just step out of that mentality. And I guess overall what I'm trying to say is anytime we're holding ourselves back, that to me is what I've started to notice as this like victim mentality. Because at the end of the day, unless we're taking radical responsibility for our situations, Aren't we always falling victim to some thought or belief that we have around ourselves that aren't true? So just some food for thought there. And through this, <laughs> a revelation of victim mentality, of course, you know, I always bring it back to close. And I've done this too, and I do this too still. So no one's perfect. Uh, we're masterpieces and works in progress at the same time, right? Another quote I'm living and dying by right now. I invite you to question, where are you playing victim with your clothes? So all of these new goals, and I can only use my goals as an example, right? So I know I'm heading into the season with some really big goals. I really want to harness this energy. Do you have really big goals? Do you have the mental confidence to handle those? Do you have the style confidence to handle those? Meaning, do you have the outfits to wear? Because if I say, hey, I plan on doing two lives and two presentations at my corporate job over this next season, am I really going to plan those things and go after those things if I also am like, yeah, but I don't have fucking nothing to wear. All my underwear have holes and everything's too tight or too big. No, I'm not. And it's not just playing victim to your clothes to hit goals. Like all of these goals are very business related and um, career related that I've been giving. But what about the moments with our families? I've noticed this. I told that story up in my, if you have not listened, you have to listen to the clothing sizes or bullshit episode I did. I was doing that over the summer. I was like, mm, I can't buy these shorts in a size 14 because I've never been a size 14. And that just doesn't make me feel good. And I had to get real fucking serious with myself and say, now that's me playing mental victim instead of just saying, okay, honestly, my goal this summer is to do lots of cool, fun shit. Well, it's 95 degrees here. So are you going to buy yourself the shorts? Because you're not going to play wear a dress every time to play mini golf or to go to bumper cars. You know, sometimes you're going to want a pair of shorts. And that's what I mean when I say playing victim to our clothes. If one of your goals, and this is always one of my goals, is to have one date night a month with my husband, if I don't feel amazing in my body, which I honestly don't, I've been very open around gaining the pounds in COVID and not getting them off, but a goal of mine is still to go on date nights. So I don't feel amazing in my body right now. And I don't have clothes that make me feel cute. Am I going to schedule those date nights with my husband? In fact, no, I'm not. So there goes those moments in time that him and I could have had time alone as adults in the summertime, specifically where our kids have been home all summer and all four of us are in the house because him and I work from home. But that's one of my core desired goals, right? That's one of my really, really big goals is to A, have adult time and B, always prioritize my marriage because it's become really clear that these kids are going to be gone soon and then it's just us. And we've always tried to make ourselves a priority in the family, not just the family, right? 
So you have to have the clothes that match the goal. And by having the clothes, I'm not saying that you have to be looking like you're going on a fashion runway. All I'm saying is your clothes need to fit. And they have to make you feel good. They have to be in colors that make you feel happy, energized, hopeful, excited, passionate, powerful, playful, expressive, badass, steady, whatever those words are that you associate with. Those clothes have to exist in your closet or you will not be stepping into this energy. So we could talk all day around September energy, January energy, whatever fuck energy it is, any time of the year. Right now, I feel like September is always a portal and it's super juicy. So we're like, we love routines and schedules. I mean, I do. I think as humans, we do because we fear nothing more than we fear the unknown. So we know what the energy feeling is going to be for September. And when you feel amazing in your clothes, the truth is you're more present in the moment. And sometimes it could be, I can give you another good example of this, is like when I wear something that's pushing the limits, even if I'm uncomfortable mentally, (laughs) but not physically, I'm hyper fucking aware and I'm hyper in the moment and I'm hyper present. And I've done that intentionally before. And it's pretty amazing. And those are some of my best memories. And those are some of my best conversations. Those are some of my best date nights. Those are some of my best family um, life events, you know, big uh, career business events. Those are some of the best ones. So just some food for thought there around building your confidence and your self-worth muscle through mindset tricks and some style solutions as we navigate into the fall. Fall is the best. I mean, it's the biggest month in fashion. September is the biggest month in fashion, and it really is just some radically beautiful energy as we transition again. So that being said, let's carve out some space now for a little fall fashion report to round up the roundup. So if you've been following along since spring, which God knows I hope you have, and if you have, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. Or if you're brand new to Katie Just Styled in the Style for Life podcast, let's talk about dopamine dressing. So I talked about this a lot in the spring. This idea of dopamine dressing continues as we go into fall. It just looks a little different than it did in the spring. So dopamine dressing is, I'm sure dopamine is another word that's been thrown around like crazy. And right now I'm not supposed to be eating a lot of sugar. And my doctor's like, I know it's tough because that dopamine. And I was like, it is. So now I have to get it from dressing. It's really the reaction to COVID life. It's really the reaction to living in sweatpants for the last two to three years. So dopamine dressing is dressing in bright colors and fun silhouettes to just reinvigorate your life, to reawaken your soul, and to really infuse you with new energy. So the dopamine dressing trend continues and kind of feeds, in my mind, it's really this overarching umbrella and everything's fed out of that. Like that's the theme of 2022, right? It's all the designers are like, yes, fuck yes. Like it's time to go. Like we're all done. We're coming out of COVID. Let's go. So while we will step in a fall, fall colors are always real prevalent in fall. We know that from an aesthetic and what's going on in our lives, pumpkins and pumpkin spice lattes and things like that. But there's a couple of other colors that we're going to see. So one true fall color is you will see marigold be so, 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 so popular this season. So again, super good fall color. I was just talking to someone the other day. I was like, so do you put marigold in the yellow or the orange bucket? I think the trend color itself, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me there because I'm going to start posting some of these visuals. This is why I can't wait to start doing video podcasting so I can show you guys examples. So the marigold color, in my mind, is just like a really pretty reach rich, deep yellow, literally just like when you think of the marigolds, we actually have some around our mailbox now. So that's pretty interesting. But what I'm most excited for is the shades of blue that are coming in. So really, really bright, fun, ocean blue colors. I did post about this in my Instagram stories. Blue is the world's favorite color. If the world had a favorite color, it would be blue because 
Blue is a color we associate with water and with air, the two most vital things to our existence. So I'm really, really excited that blue is going to be on the scene. It's going to add so much fun energy as we head into the fall. I personally don't like the shortened days. So I'm very excited about the blue because it's going to add that pop, but it's not really a sky blue. It's what I think is the closest to like a true primary blue. You're going to see it everywhere. Purses, necklaces, pants, tops, all of that. That's all the kind of fun stuff I'm going to put in this fall book book with my easy outfit formulas is how to infuse that into your wardrobe. So whether you're like me and you're like, give me the bright blue pants and the matching one shoulder shirt, or you're like, that's cute, but I'd like to experiment with like a little necklace and maybe a little clutch. All of those easy outfit ideas will be in this new lookbook that will be coming out for fall 2022. But mark my words, next time you go to Target, you'll start to see that color palette. And of course, Barbie core. I don't know how I feel. I mean, I love the word Barbie core. I think it sounds fun. But pink is having a moment. Pink's always having a moment, to be fair. But like that super bright Barbie pink, which of course I'm a fan because it's really sh any shade of pink and that's my favorite lipstick color. So be on the lookout for all things pink. And it's really going to be a lot. So pink in general, right? It's funny because now my hair is pink. Pink in general, but it's really that hyper, hyper pink. So you will see tons of that. I love it. I think it's fun. Of course, it's my favorite shade of lipstick. So for me, I primarily am going to continue to lean in it with the lipstick and then match it with some of my more casual shirts, like my chambray shirt or a white t-shirt or my Aquarius, my new Aquarius shirt. So that's a little bit on fall colors and what to expect there. There's always lots of color palettes, right? And you could, you'll you read different reports and there's always things, but you will see those as some big headliner, deep, bold dopamine dressing colors. And what I love about fashion is the duality where there's the yin, there's the yang. So on the flip side of those bold dopamine dressing, rich hue colors, there's going to be the pastel crew. So if you love pastels, there's going to be the pastels too. So you see lots of pinks, lots of lavender. I think lavender is going to be the standout color in that pastel palette. So if you love some lavender and you love purple, it's an easy, amazing way to work it in. If you've always wanted to do purple, but you're not sure, I think the lavender color this season is going to be a really easy place to start. So be on the lookout for that. And then I don't think this is really a color, but this definitely is going to feed into some of the other themes this season is shimmer and shine, all things bling, all things bling. Really, this is part of this new idea, this new trend story. Let's put it, um, our obsession as a society with aliens. And now I would say anyone listening to the podcast who has a kid, I'm not sure the age range here, but definitely under 12, probably definitely under 10, the new Zombies 3 movie just came out, Alien Invasion. You're probably laughing your ass off right now because if you have a kid my age in your house, you have watched the video or the movie and listened to the song on fucking repeat. So Alien Invasion, um, what a lot of fashion um, houses are referring to as Alien Superstar. I think it's fun. It's the intro of a lot of shimmer, shine, bling, mick bling. Um, I posted on my Instagram the other day, like shoe, um, shoe bling. So like blinged out shoes, like Converse has a whole new shoe that's like basically bedazzled. So bedazzled everything, like super shiny, um, just infusion, which is great for this time of year because then the next we'll head into holiday season and that's when we really get to play at the shine, right? Another byproduct of this alien superstar is going to be the sleeves. We're going to continue to see the big, big puff sleeves. Um, they're great for Zoom. So any of my ladies who are still doing Zoom, great for Zoom. They're great for in-person meetings and presentations because, like, they just naturally draw attention. They're conversation starters as a community as a society, we're craving community. We're craving to get back to normal routines. We're craving connection with other humans. So you're going to continue to see this really vibrant color palette from the dopamine dressing mix with the shimmer and the shine and the really big shoulders. Very excited about that. 
Um, a couple of other things to be on the lookout for is all fucking things biker chic. Leather everything. If you don't see any of the trends I'm talking about in this fall trim report, you will see leather. And when I say leather everything, I mean leather everything. So heavy duty leather. So if you don't own a leather jacket, this is the season to get you a leather jacket. And while the moto style is really popular because moto boots are definitely going to be the trans, you know, lug boots have been really popular for the last couple of years. So now the lug boots are going to start having lots of buckles and fun things like that on them. So think heavy duty moto style, um, bike, not biker leather jackets as well. I think I'm actually going to invest in one that's going to be what's on my wardrobe gap list for the season is I don't currently have a leather jacket that I love. So leather, everything, vegan leather, depending on where we're at um, in that realm, you're going to see it everywhere. Leather, everything. And then last but not least, what I think is my favorite overarching trend for this season is power casual. You guys know I love my casual, but this idea of power casual is, okay, well, I'm really comfortable from being in my house for the last two years, but also I want both. I want to go out into the world again and re- integrate, but I still want to be casual, but I also want to look powerful at the same time. So what you're going to see is a lot of, and we've already been seeing this a little bit last season, is you're going to see a lot of suiting, but that's really relaxed. So you're going to see a lot of puddle pants, meaning like oversized denim, oversized bottom pants, but you're going to see more knit blazers. So when the bottoms get really oversized and relaxed like that, what happens is then the top of our bodies and styling, right, usually gets a little bit tighter because we have to create some balance on the body. Because at the end of the day, styling really is just all about balanced. And through these casual, little bit more casual looks by the pants getting more relaxed and being a little bit bigger, we've seen flares coming back over the last year or two, but now I mean relaxed, like through the whole leg, but we're going to see a little bit of pinstripe adding and some more of those military style buttons added as well to really act and create that powerful, casual feel. So I'm casual because this outfit isn't really tight, it's flowy and it's loose, it makes me feel great, but I'm going to pair it with very classic and traditional um, fabric motifs and designs that make me feel powerful. So I'm really excited for fall. There's lots of new things. This is just like tip of the iceberg. I have so many notes and so many fun ideas on how to share this. And while I really truly understand the importance of not being trendy, because that's never our goal, but I think inside we all yearn to be relevant. And it's really fun when you listen to a report like this and then you do go into your local Target and you start to see these trends pop up. Your confidence will soar and you will be confident in starting to learn and decide what new styles you should invest in in this season to complement the basic pieces that you already own. So lots of new juice coming up for the fall. Make sure you hop on to my newsletter to keep in touch or connect with me on Instagram, katiejuststyled.com backslash newsletter. So you can hop in there and start getting some goodies and get all the fun announcements for all the things that are coming. Maybe you're interested in the group program. Maybe you're interested in the new fall lookbook. Maybe you're interested in the free workshop that's coming up. Maybe you're just here for fucking inspo because my emails are really starting to get that good. So hop on that, katiejuststyled.com backslash newsletter. Or if you are just here for the inspo and you just want to chat and get some community, then let's connect on Instagram and follow me over there. Katie Allen Stylist. Once again, Thank you so much for sharing this space with me and let me bend your ear for 45 minutes tonight. today. I truly enjoy showing up here each week to help share inspiration, things I'm learning from, um, so we can all continue to evolve and feel good in our bodies now. More confidence, more energy, feeling good in our bodies now. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the flip side.
Thank you.